Hello guys, what's going on? It's me, Lachlan from JLT Effects, and today I wanted to give you guys a tutorial on how to use Warp Stabilizer or how to stabilize uh, video in After Effects or Premiere Pro. Uh, it's in After Effects CS 5.5 onwards and Premiere Pro CS 6 onwards. So why don't we get started? Um, to start off, I'll give you a side by side shot with and without Warp Stabilizer. And now I'll show you how to do it and use it in After Effects because that one's got the most support and it's just the same in Premiere Pro pretty much. Um, so uh, we start off, uh, just opened up After Effects, haven't done anything uh, to save you guys the time of loading it. And you just want to select a new composition, uh, set up your parameters, whatever settings you want and press OK, press OK if that comes up. Just telling you information which doesn't apply to this situation. Now you want to grab your source video um, from your explorer window, pop it in there uh, like so. Um, then you can get rid of that uh, and we can drag this onto the timeline right here. Uh, so notice it's pretty shaky um, as you hopefully will have already seen. and. All you need to do is bring up this effects and presets tab. If it's not there, go to your window tab and make sure this one's ticked. Uh, and if it's ticked, it'll be there somewhere, somewhere on this window. And you go warp stay blazer. There you go. So just click on it and drag it either onto your layer in your preview uh, window or onto your timeline on the layer. Just click drag and it's going to initialize and then analyze the uh, frames to find tracking points where it can track between each frames so it takes um, longer depending uh, the longer your clip is the longer it'll take to analyze of course and similar to the way rendering or anything else works so yeah I'll come back once it's finished analyzing all right, so this is just about to finish. So thought I'd just explain why this is so good. Um, so if you don't have warp stabilizer, you may or may not know that you had to do it manually using the tracker um, thing where you'd select points on this and it would track that point within this, a certain area and you'd have to stabilize it manually, which took a lot more time than this to be honest and I'm pretty sure people agree with me. So I'll take off this auto scale um, so I can show you what it is actually doing. So hopefully that's, no, that's not it. Uh, we just need to stabilize only. Alright, so now what we'll do is we'll go transform and I'll just scale it down so you can see how it actually works. Um, so as you can see, it moves the actual video source around um, to counter the shakes or anything. Now keep in mind that this will not counter any motion blur or anything that is introduced into the source video, so it is of course still better to take stable source video, but it does quite a good job anyway. So yeah, so if we we'll watch that and you can see it's bouncing around and uh, it looks pretty good, but uh, if you want, you can do auto scale and it automatically scales, so I'll scale this back up to 100% and now it is automatically going to scale the video, um, so you do lose resolution of course because it is losing pixels for this to zoom in to counter the moving of the video, but it still does, uh, like it still is quite good quality for 1080p anyway. Um, uh, or, so it'll automatically crop, or you can do what they call synthesize edges. I don't use this very much because, like, it does work sometimes, it doesn't work some other times. Um, if I scale this down, I don't know if you'll be able to see it working. Um, but, uh, so as you can see, it's essentially drawing the outer frame from what is in the preview previous frame. So this may work in some cases, may not in other cases, um, but for the best results, uh, if synthesized edges doesn't work, choose auto scale and it should have your back. Uh, 
So I'll set that back to 100%. Sorry about the mouse and keyboard, which you can probably hear in the audio. I don't have a very good audio setup. But now, if we do a RAM preview of that, you can see that it is in fact significantly, I would say, significantly more stable than it was before Warp Stabilizer. So, um, as you can see, that's great. It's also really good if you want to, say, you want to have some sort of slide slider type pan, but you don't have uh, a slider. I don't have a slider either. So maybe you have a wheelie box which you put things in, and you can put a tripod on top of that and push it along. With warp stabilizer on it, uh, sometimes you can actually get really nice shots. Of course, stabilize uh, slider would be better, but it does get the job done pretty well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, of course, you can just render it. Uh, I'll quickly show how to render it. So you want to go uh, composition, add to render queue, and then you have all your settings here. Um, so if you want audio, tick that, but we don't need it. I'm going to do H.264 uh, format options. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and output to, let me just pop that over here. Uh, so we'll go comp one, save. And then you just press the render button and ta-da, it's done. So I hope you enjoyed uh, and I hope it helped. Uh, and I guess I'll see you in the next video.